So I'm standing here in uh, Toronto and uh, we're at the Upgrade Dinner for the Biohacker Summit and uh, it's also always we've always held this amazing uh, pre, pre-event meetings or get-togethers where we cook the food with some awesome uh, really high quality ingredients so let's go check out what uh, we're having. Mm, looking good. The beef hold on is amazing. Fresh wild salmon from Alaska. Okay. Alaska. I want your commentary. Huh? What's the commentary? <laughs> 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 Drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shots on Where's the camera? I don't know. Where's the camera? 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 Madagascar. What did uh, they say? Was the one or what was the other? Hey, Italian. No, Forastero. No, I like that. Forastero. Forastero. Hey, Italian. Forastero. This always gets a good. <laughs> It's actually pretty good. It's good. Like 100% chocolate. 100%? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's still pretty like, pretty soft or... It's not that bitter. Yeah, it's not actually that bitter, yeah. It's weird. And that's really, what this blend is, is a, an adrenal tonic. You could also... Make this in a tea base. We've done it with hot water, but we can easily turn this into a tea based drink where we've got adding our or a coffee base if that's what you so choose. But adding in the tonic herb. So this is the Hollandaise sauce with eggs and butter, butter and oil and, butter. And, and this is like 100,000 calories. Yep. You just eat this and you don't have to eat again for three months again, <laughs> never again. Perfect for Canadian weather. The hibernation diet. Yep. So what are we doing here? This is the Ayurvedic spice ball. It has tahini, coconut, Ayurvedic herbs, and sesame, uh, black and white seeds. Nice. Somehow taste it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Boop, boop, boop. Train. The masculine, masculine train. This is going to need. I hope there's, there's got to be good sized blocks here. This is scary to me. This. Alright. Is that not a cook one? No, no, I got one on there. It's just that it blows up. Traveling medicine. These yeah. are these are power pills. Yeah, they're so they're, they're like a <laughs> You eat them. Eat them. Have one. What's in there? Onion the That's an aspect. Yeah. Like gingerbread though. <laughs> part of it, yeah, you can taste the part of it. Interesting. Yeah. Round two beetroot soup with the sulforaphane broccoli and the bee, bee pollen. Bee pollen. Yeah. Super weird for it. It's like a cold soup. Yeah, it's a It's cold. Yeah. 
Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. <laughs> Broccoli stalk with broccoli stalker more sulforaphane more salt but also to do with your external where's the smoking is really obvious the predictable smoking is Oh, in the oceans, it? Stay there, guys. Don't move. It's a I'm going to get a picture of you, getting a picture of her, getting a picture of her food. That's better. Yeah. It's, it's a photoception. Yeah. Oh, you should have been. You could have been taking a picture of me, taking a picture of him. Uh, <laughs> what kind of a world are we living in? Very well photographed. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Commentary. Oh, it's good. It's amazing. The salmon's incredible. Wild salmon. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> Savage. You can taste the Aztec xanthan. How's the food so far? Ah, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So we have some uh, under vacuum, you know, sous vide prepared uh, pike perch and uh, some Atlantic salmon with some really nice hollandaise sauce. So my favorite way of having some egg and butter in its purest form. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Vacuum, vacuum fish. <laughs> Ryan, how's the fish? Unbelievable, man. Oh, wow. It's ketogenic. So good. All of this sauce. Yeah. Describe your taste. It's a savory, sweet um, spice bar. So we have anti inflammatory, digestive, carminative, warming spices. So. Tomorrow. Toronto Biohacker Summit. Biohacking is not better, faster, stronger, more coffee. It's more about understanding how you optimize sleep and recovery and uh, the balance of things so that you can perform better in your day-to-day -day life. What you see on the bottom here, what you should be eating every day, five to seven servings is bread and pasta and you know rice and polenta. So not exactly slimming foods to, to most of us thinking about that today, but that's what we're told to eat and things like uh, you know an egg, well you should eat that once a week maybe, that's uh, full of cholesterol and so on. And that's exactly what we did. So people always like to blame the obesity epidemic on the people because they say, well, we told them good advice, but they just didn't listen, so they got really fat. But that's not really true, because if you look at what Americans ate and Canadians, we did exactly what they told us. So butter, way down, eggs, way down, animal meats, way down, and ate lots and lots of grains, right? 40% increase in grains and all this low-fat sugar. Yeah. If you're going to get rid of this, you're going to add more of this. So that's sort of exactly what we did. We did what they told us to. And the result was, of course, a huge obesity epidemic. So the other thing that people never really talk about, when they talk about dietary changes from the 1970s to the 2000s, is this fact that we're eating a lot more frequently. And to some degree, they're tied in. But on the other hand, um, you can see that in 19... Uh, 77, so uh, we'll just look at adults, but children show the same distribution. So if you look at adults, uh, they're eating around, this is the NHAN survey, they're eating about three times a day. So the big spike here is at around two to three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. That's the sort of um, thing that we're, that's the sort of meal pattern that we're eating. By 2004, what you can see that is we're closer to five or six times a day. So we're eating a lot more frequently, and to some degree it's related to the foods that we eat, because if you're eating a lot less um, 
butter and eggs and steak, if you're not eating steak and eggs in the morning and you're eating a couple of slices of white bread with jam, you're going to get a lot more hungry, so then you wind up eating more frequently. And then the other thing that we get told all the time is to eat six times a day. It's like that advice never came from science. Nobody ever thought that was a good idea. It was just because we were hungry, so then we had to eat a muffin at uh, 10.30. But we're eating a lot more frequently, and that's one of the really big changes of the last uh, sort of quarter century. Where you see, obviously, a ketogenic diet, low carb plus resistance training, has a ton of benefits for body fat loss, right? That's great. But the question still comes up is, what about muscle mass? So we were one of the first ones, uh, and you see this all the time. People on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they're like, oh, it's impossible. You need insulin. You need this. So we're like, all right, cool. Like, let's, why don't we put this to the test? So this is a p paper we just uh, published. We took 25 resistance trained males, put them on either a high carb or a ketogenic diet, match for protein, which is something that is often missing in the literature, um, is that we match them for protein. So that way people can say it was a higher protein intake that, that was the result of this. Adapted them for two weeks and then put them on an eight week long ketogenic diet. So here's blood ketone levels. You see here at the top, this is the ketogenic dieting group. Their ketone levels were kind of elevated. We measured blood ketones throughout the entire study. On the bottom is a Western diet, exactly what you would uh, expect. So here's what we found. You look at lean body mass. Both groups at the end of the intervention gained the same amount. They were training hard, three times a week, um, full body programs like really hard workouts. These guys were squatting and deadlifting on average like two and a half, two to two and a half times their body weight. You look at fat mass and the ketogenic diet group lost significantly more fat mass than the Western diet group. So kind of this body recomposition going on. We are gaining muscle, losing fat mass. So we basically showed it was possible, and it is possible, on a well-formulated ketogenic diet, even when protein is controlled and matched for, you can gain muscle. Um, what we find in these mushrooms is that they concentrate really unique chemistry in their spore pads and all through their bodies. They produce something called branched polysaccharides, and we're going to go there. We're going to get there. There are these macromolecules that our body can cut up and use as weaponry for our immune system, that can help stabilize our microbiome and build up better soils inside of us and heal this whole, and this whole system. So we call them biological response modifiers. They're immunomodulants. What is that? If I got a low immune system, it's going to bring me up. If I got a high immune system, aka autoimmune, the Crohn's, the fibromyalgia, the, the uh, rheumatoid arthritis, it's going to help bring that heightened immune response back down. Essentially, a college education in how to show up as a balanced being on planet Earth. And we find these in all of these medicinal mushrooms. All right. How are we doing over here? We're doing mag magnetic. Pulsed electromagnetic fields over here, yeah. You can, you can actually see that it shocks the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now we have it at 3.5 pulses per second. We're kind of slowly starting to adjust the magnetic field strength. Right now it's about 83 magnetic field strength. It can go anywhere to uh, 1 to 105. And then we can also change simultaneously to change pulses per second along with the magnetic field strength. How are you feeling now? Are you still feeling it in the neck and the, the right hip? Yeah, a little bit. It's like you get used to it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So that not, a, not a lot of people get used to it right away. So that means that your cells are already starting to become resilient a little bit. You want to raise it a little bit? Are you okay right now? Yeah. Tell me when it's done. Well, even before I, I, even before I raise the magnetic field strength, let me show you the different pulses per second. So I can go, here's 4, 4.5. There's 5 pulses per second. Wait, this is 5 pulses per second. And again, every one of those pulses is slipping past that cell wall and charging the mitochondria, nucleus, organelles of the cell, and then reverberating back into the body. Ketosis is really a highly evolved, highly conserved process. And fundamentally, it's a way for humans to fuel their brains. And the problem is, you know, we store our, our, our majority of our fuel in adipose tissue. And the problem is the brain can't use fat in that form. 
So we had to evolve an alternative pathway, which is really what ketosis is. So when we're breaking down adipose tissue, releasing fatty acids at a high rate, and that those fatty acids are taken up by the liver and essentially exceeding the liver's capacity to oxidize those fatty acids, we have this pathway by which they can be converted into ketones. And this occurs primarily in the liver. So we're converting those uh, fatty acids, partially breaking them down into smaller molecules called ketones. And our two primary ketones are beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate. They're four carbons. And unlike fatty acids, long-chain fatty acids, these ketones can, in fact, be taken up by the brain and used as fuel. So that's how we use fat for fuel, in order to ensure a stable fuel source for the brain. And once they're taken up, they're, they're oxidized and converted back to acetyl-CoA and generate ATP. And we actually knew all this metabolism 50 years ago. George Cahill at Harvard performed cutting-edge research studying starvation uh, ketosis. And it's true, uh, if, you're, um, if you're consuming carbohydrate as a primary nutrient, your brain depends on glucose as an energy source. It needs about 150 grams of glucose per day just to function normally. But if you're in ketosis, and Cahill showed this with very uh, invasive arterial venous difference studies um, across the brain, looking at um, healthy adults who had been starved for up to four weeks, and showed that the brain can extract up to two-thirds of its energy from ketones, dramatically reducing its glucose requirements. It's actually the recording, so I'm going to take like a snapshot out of it. Awesome. Say keto. Keto. Ascension. <laughs> actually, you can get, go ahead and lay your hands out there. So we haven't started working out yet, but what we'll do is we'll do no weight bicep curls. Actually, I'm going to give you a little bit of resistance. Is that green band that's right. We don't need it. All right, so bicep, bicep curls, right? Oh yeah. I know. I'm making them work. The only reason we make you do the bands because yeah. you already worked out, right? Yeah, I did. Did you already work out too? Yeah. All right, so okay. so go ahead. Step, step in the middle there. All right, so here we go. Uh, give me 20 to 30. Give me bicep curls until you start to feel a lactic acid response. If you feel it already, then we'll, we'll drop it in. Now it's a systemic response. I want good posture. I want your head tall, squeeze your butt cheeks, good posture, and back a little bit. There you go. And nice and slow up, slow down, and keep the biceps engaged all the way down. Don't let them rest. Don't let them rest. And then right back into it. So you know how they charge? This is the first set. You shouldn't feel too much spring. <laughs> 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 Can we get a speech on this? What are we seeing here, Ollie? Okay, here are some interesting uh, bicep curls. Uh, we are having a probably uh, close to hole in one here. Let's see where the pudding goes. <laughs> Oh, this is a different game, okay. Oh, all we're having here is a uh, huge biceps and amazing vascular tour. <laughs> They're about to explode the great sea land. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me see the legs. Huh? Let me see the legs. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And I want to do it more. generating so much HGH. 2,800% burst in human growth yeah. hormone within yeah. an hour of doing this. So, yeah. yeah. And that's really important because, you know, without without going endogenous injections, right? Yeah. This prime, it basically, the lactic acid, lactic acid tells your pituitary, make HGH. Yeah. So you're making human growth. Let's let the pressure off here. Look at that. That's a pump. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> I was it? This is me getting some of my antioxidants in my body. Hormesis. <laughs> yes. 
It's a reserve throw. Well, actually, so you want to talk about quantified? I measured my HRV after drinking, and if I have about two, up to two drinks a night, if I'm out with in public friends, my HRV goes way up in the morning. Really? If I have more than three drinks, it goes way down. There's a bell curve. Okay. And I think it's because. I think with the alcohol, it's, it's not so much directly with this, but it's usually I'm in a social context. And I think being like, it helps my HRV, being like you're in a social environment around like minded people. And like, so for me, I always have a, a positive effect. Like being it's like a life. release, release. Yeah, but, but, but there's a bell curve. So I, you know, I'm not about getting drunk. It's just like two drinks in the night, and I feel really good. Mm. Yeah, that's true. In the Delta Force. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the chopper. So the goal is not to, as we see in this selfish health and longevity sector, to be able to see who can, who can make the most money, who can f*** most, who can have the biggest house. That's not the goal of living a long time. It's not to snub your neighbor and be in a, be in a race against the Joneses. It's to be here to see if you can truly live out your purpose for as long as possible, and that is why you should pay attention. To Interestingly, every cell in your body has its own clock. And the purpose of these cellular clocks is to temporarily separate the timing of incompatible processes, such as building new structures and breaking down damaged ones. That's so Yeah, nice. nice one, let's, let's move closer to the camera. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do the hand thing. Right. Let's do the hand thing. Like this. Like a freaking... Uh, like a spiral. Ah, spiral. 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 <laughs> okay. Let's see what's going to work around. Yeah. Let's, let's go for the spiral. Woo! Yeah, I'm going to my we have been avoiding North America for a while. And uh, the reason is that there is a lot of interesting stuff in Europe already. You know, you should come over and see what kind of stuff we are working on in terms of biohacking.